Hi friend, I'm Nick and welcome back to Nick Pixel TV. If you're new here or if you've been here for a while or you've interacted with my channel in any way, shape or form, a like, a comment, a share, a subscribe, I thank you. 9,600 subscribers on our way to 10,000. It's truly a blessing to be able to create content for you guys. Today we're here with the Predator 9500 watt generator again. This thing has been pretty cool. It's worked really well for me so far. I've been putting some different tests on it. I bought it for a couple of reasons. One for a home backup to provide pure sine wave power for my house. Two would probably be the Miller Multimatic 220 welder to be able to do some mobile welding, throw the generator and the welder on the trailer and be able to take it and go do some mobile welding. And then also, you know, power different things. I have an RV that has its own built-in generator, but it's nice to have a backup. This thing is 257 pounds though, so you're not gonna be just, you know, taking this thing and tossing it around. But you guys have asked some crazy questions that are very similar to what my use cases were. So I thought I could share some of those some of those things with you and we can put it to the test today. So that's what we're gonna do. So first things first, I did reach out to Harbor Freight. I shot him an email and said, hey, if you wanna answer any questions in the comments or if you have any things that you wanna answer, let me know. And then also, there were some questions you guys asked that I didn't wanna speak on their behalf because I don't know and I just wanted to find out for you guys. So a lot of people asked you know, about locations and where they could pick these things up. There's 1100 Harbor Freight brick and mortar locations nationwide with 85% of the population being within uh, 30 minutes to an existing Harbor Freight store. They also said that they have a large inventory of generators in stock and they do their best to conveniently supply customers with generator power when they need it without it being a special order item. The next thing was parallel capabilities. A lot of people asked about the parallel kits for this. They're not out yet. I believe that they are working on them, but they are working on a 50 amp parallel kit for the 3500 series generator. So a lot of people had those generators and pair those together or want to pair those together. Uh, this would be a 50 amp parallel kit to combine two 3500 watt generators and get 7500 peak and 6000 running watts of power. I also had mentioned in my video about the toolless entry would be nice on the doors. They said they'll take that into consideration as well as having a USB-C port on the front of that and looking at the, uh, the screen there to be able to tell you what wattage you're using. That would be nice. So they said also prepare yourselves and buy your generators ahead of time. Of course, this way you have time to break it in, change the oil, test it out, make sure all your critical stuff is gonna run on it uh, before the event of a storm or, or a mishap where you need, you need generator power and then it's too late to get one. Uh, there were some comments on that too. One of the big things I think people asked about was getting parts for this generator and getting parts for their generator. So this is coming from Harbor Freight. They inventory most common replacement parts for the majority of the tools in our distribution center. I think that distribution center is in Southern California. These can be ordered by calling the customer service line and usually shipped the same or the next business day. A lot of people also had questions and comments on the warranty and stuff. Now, from my experience talking to other people, I don't think Harbor Freight has put many people through the ropes on getting these things warrantied. If you buy the warranty, a lot of times they just say bring it in, they exchange it for a new one. So I think a lot of the protections and a lot of things they recommend is just to prevent misuse, I guess would be the word and then people just taking advantage of the warranty. But most people that I've talked to, and this is just, you know, this is nothing with uh, from their email. Most people that I've talked to have said good things about getting their, their replacements if they need it. So take that for what it's worth. I just thought I'd answer some of those questions and they, they jumped in to help out. So I appreciate Harbor Freight for doing that just to, to help you guys out. And that's what, that's what we're all about here. I did change oil yesterday. I didn't do it at one hour or five hours. I waited till 29.9 hours. I ran conventional motor oil in it, 10W30. I ran that for 29.9 hours. Pop this door off here, two eight millimeter fasteners. Pop this little door out so you can fit your socket in there, 12 millimeter socket. Undo it, there's a nice little drain pan that drains out the bottom. You pull those out, I'll show a couple clips of that. And then once we got the oil out, I didn't notice anything you know, major in the oil. The oil had a little bit of a sheen on it, just like you would with any other motor you know, a brand new motor uh, on your first oil change. No metal flakes, nothing crazy. We did filter it, so I have some clips of that we'll share with that. But the oil change pretty straightforward with this. Filled it back up with oil. I did go over to synthetic oil now, and I think 30 hours should be good enough uh, for the break-in period. So 30 hours with the conventional motor oil, and then I switched over to synthetic. So we're all good with the oil change. Just a little quick disclaimer. When you're working with electrical, make sure you know what you're doing or ask a friend or ask somebody that knows about electrical or a, a certified electrician to help you out. I definitely recommend getting yourself a good clamp meter and a meter that you can just test your connections before you go live or test any adapters you're using. I do have some adapters here that are third party. There's also some third party accessories like gas caps and uh, magnetic oil filters you may want to, or yeah, oil filters, 
uh, magnetic dipsticks that have a magnetic tip on them that will filter out any metal particles that may or may not be in different motors. Now this one I haven't noticed anything, so I didn't purchase anything for that yet. But as far as adapters, I have a bunch of different adapters here, some different twist lock adapters and things you may or may not need depending on your use case. We can talk about those and just be careful when you're working with your meters and your electrical. So this unit's off. I did separate my home from the uh, shed right now. So I have a load center over here. I do have a separate ground run. Uh, a lot of people have asked if this unit is neutral and ground bonded and that it is. And that does say it here, neutral bonded to frame. So you have to consider that. And a lot of this stuff with electrical depends on how maybe your RV's wired, how your home's wired, how your, you know, every use case can be different. So that's the things to consider and that's gonna depend on what electrical adapters you're gonna use. So having a good meter is helpful to know what you're putting out there. Because on a, on a 240 plug, you can run 120 and just pull off a of one leg if you want to. And some RVs do that as well, even if they have a 50 amp receptacle. Now, the most you're gonna get out of this over here is 30 amps at 240, and then over here, 30 amps at 120. So there's no 50 amp breakers on this, so there's not gonna be 50 amps coming out of this. There's gonna be a 30 max on this one, a 30 max on this one, 20 max on these ones, okay? So there is a switch on here that controls 120 volt only, or you can switch it over to 240 and 120, but all of these things are powered at the same time. So you can actually, and there's a breaker over here for the 240 unit. So basically people would ask me if you can run the 240 and the 120 at the same time. Yes, you can on both the 30 amps. So the overall power of this generator is 7,600 watts and 9,500 watts peak. If you're, it depends, that peak is probably just for a spike. It depends if you're running heaters or if you're running something that's like a constant, consistent pull and a consistent load. So we're gonna try to max that out today, but I did do some different wiring here to set you up and, and be able to test it. And I do have some of these little kilowatt meters so we can test that out. And yes, my wires are exposed so that I could show you kind of this stuff. Right, so this should be fun. So we're all hooked up right now. We got three little portable heater units. We got those connected. So two of the units are on a 30 amp service right here, the 30 amp at 120. One of the heaters is over here on the 20 amp service. And then we have our 240 side to run our heater over here, which runs into my load center. Now the load center is completely isolated from my house, including the ground. So this is a standalone load center. We have a 30 amp breaker to run our heater. We have a 40 amp for the welder. The 40 amp will connect that up to test the welder here in a little bit, but that's my heater on the wall there. And that thing runs right around 4,700 watts. I'm going to say, give or take. Uh, it's a 240 heater and it does, um, uh, it, it's, it's basically locked to the setting right now. So we're not going to change any settings on that. It's just a 240 heater. It's 5,000 watts rated. It pulls about 4,700. So just know that that's off our 220 side and we're going to do some amp tests on this, but first let's just get some ratings on what these heaters pull because with those two heaters going and the heater in the shed, we should be pulling around 76, 7,700 watts, somewhere in that range. And then we'll put it over the top with the other heater here. So let's get her fired up. All right, so here's our first heater right here. That's on now. We're at 123 volts, 12.41 amps. And that's bearing a little bit, 12.36, 1,520 watts, 60 hertz. Our second heater over here, we have that cranked up the whole way. I'm going to plug this in. One twenty-three volt, 12.36 amps, 1,520 watts, 60 hertz. And then our last heater here. We have that right now, it's probably turned down, but we'll turn that up the whole way. Right around 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19.80, 19
it right now. But just know that you can run both your 30 amp side and your 220 side at the same time, along with your 20 amp circuits. So now to clear that overload alarm, you have to shut off the generator and restart it. So we'll shut it down. And once, once you shut down, we just wait a second and restart it. So there's our load test there. Let's take a look at the welder next. So we'll just, we're gonna disconnect that. And we're gonna leave our 220 side in, which is gonna run our welder and our heater. So I'll turn the heater off and we'll, uh, we'll try to burn some wire here. So as you can see here, we're still wired in. We're gonna flip this breaker on, right? Which is for our welder plug. We're gonna plug this thing in over here. All right, so let's see if the generator will run the heater which is about 20 amps, and the Multimatic 220 at about 20 amps or so. That uh, heater's on full blast. You can hear the generator kick up. Let's see what she does here, if we can overload it. So what popped? So she definitely can't run the heater and the welder at the same time. It popped the 30 amp breaker. And that's just because of consistent load. So we'll, t we'll turn off the, uh, the heater. We'll go back to the welder. Now I'm going to burn this hot, just for the heck of it. friends so i'm not sure what you guys think but i'm pretty happy as a clam right now welds look good a little bit undercut and stuff because i i cranked it up just to uh to burn down into it and the steel was pretty cold so other than that pretty good welds we're looking good there we'll do some more tests we should burn into that one inch plate just for the heck of it but uh i haven't noticed any problems like i said it's going to run this by itself without a problem it couldn't hold the heater and the welder at the same time which is expected it's not it's not made to do that and the heater's pulling a constant draw along with the welder so uh, when you get under power, that's going to happen, but I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this generator so far. we got clean power. We'll do some more tests with it in the future. We're going to mess around with the RV. I'll show you some adapters. We'll talk about some things. I threw the whiteboard up. We're just going to have a little fun over here. Like I said, not scientific. Don't bust my balls too bad, but I, I appreciate you so much for watching and, and being part of my channel, and uh, we'll see you in the next Pixel. Thanks.